Yes, we're in Greenpeace because we were interested in the total ecology anyways. I was an ecology student at the time, and Bob Hunter had written extensively on the environment. And Paul was into whales. So for us, it was a natural. But for the anti-nuclear or more sort of pacifist group within Greenpeace, it didn't make any sense at all. They said, what, that's some kind of motherhood deal. That's not important. Whales? We're going to blow each other to smithereens any day now, so let's stick to the point. Let's stick to the anti-nuclear. The ecologists won. In the spring of 1975, Greenpeace tracked down a Russian whale fleet in the middle of a kill. There were a half dozen harpoon boats and a huge factory ship, a hundred kilometers off the California coast. The old Phyllis Cormac, spruced up and with a new engine, carried a number of inflatables to harass the harpoon boats. It also carried a film crew and an interpreter. <laughs> The Russian whalers made one big mistake. They tried to ignore Greenpeace. They went on with the hunt while the film cameras recorded the whole gruesome scene. We brought a piece of film which showed a Russian harpoon boat shooting a harpoon over the heads of people in a little rubber dinghy trying to get in front of the harpoon to save the whales. Whales are breaking the surface all around us. Then one whale came up, a female gasping for breath. I could see the harpooner tensing, so I knew he was going to fire. There was a roar like a giant firecracker, and George and I just both automatically ducked. And then the whale was hit. The whale was rising in front of us, spouting blood. And at this point, the Russians immediately stopped the hunt. And that piece of film went around the world that night. It went on all three U.S. network television stations, and it essentially launched us into the world stage of environmental activism. The next year, Greenpeace was back with a bigger boat, but the Russians were not going to be drawn into killing in front of the cameras again. By now, environmentalists all over the world were clamoring to join Greenpeace. The Greenpeace name was finally copyrighted. David McTaggart opened a European headquarters in England and the new Greenpeace International purchased a flagship, a converted fishing trawler renamed the Rainbow Warrior. It carried ecological hit teams all over the world and wherever they went, the technique was the same. Force an incident in front of the cameras to draw attention to the cause. Off Iceland, it was getting arrested for interfering with the whale hunt. Off the Spanish coast, the issue was the dumping of radioactive waste in the ocean. Once again, Greenpeace used the small inflatables to create a focus for the massive problem of nuclear waste and pollution of the seas. The Greenpeaces almost sought out danger. They always got dramatic film coverage. There could easily have been a death in this incident, but fortunately the protester only suffered shock. In 1983, another daring voyage for publicity into Soviet Siberia. The landing party said it was looking for suspected illegal whaling activities. And although another conservation group had taken the same pictures two years earlier, it was Greenpeace that captured the press attention. After a wild chase by the Russians, a ship belonging to the Greenpeace Environmental Group is in safe harbor tonight. Its cargo includes film taken during a surreptitious mission to Siberia. The story had all the elements. Seven Greenpeace is arrested, a flight back into international waters with the Soviets in hot pursuit. The fugitives were released several days later and the media was on hand to record the happy reunion. In cities everywhere, people were clamoring to save Wales, even though many had never actually been near one. A mass consciousness had been jarred by the power of the image. It was a tactic that would also work for seals. The seals uh, were the most powerful in image of, um, of innocence, of unsullied nature, of, um, of motherhood and continuity with life and all that that you could find anywhere. And I would think that, uh, that the seal campaign, in, in terms of spin-off, of uh, the animal movement and what have you, probably had the single greatest impact. 
nothing that Greenpeace had tackled was as controversial as the harp seal hunt on the ice flows off Newfoundland. It was seen by them as a senseless slaughter. Their aim was to stop the killings, but the fact that the Greenpeace image would be enhanced by the attempt to save the baby seals was not lost on them either. 